Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Raka Kodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And uh, I wanted to go into this uh, quick article from Zero Hedge that I uh, came across and it's titled Inflation will, will Price Many Americans Out of Housing and Into Homelessness. Okay, I'll read that again. Inflation will price many Americans out of housing and into homelessness. Now, it says one of the most detrimental aspects of an inflationary or stagflationary crisis. And for those of you who don't know, stagflation is when you get less for the same price. Okay, you buy, you know, you go to buy chicken, 10 chicken, 10 piece chicken wings, $10. You come back, five, five pieces, $10. All right, you get less for the same amount. And it says here, um, in most cases, housing costs to housing costs tend to rise while home sales fall. It might seem counterintuitive. One would assume that as sales fall, so should prices. But this is the upside down world of inflation. Certain commodities and products, usually necessities, almost always skyrocket in price ultimately driving American families out of the marketplace completely. And that's what they plan to do. And the average individual that's going about, instead of, and I'm, I'm, I'm very sure you're going to have, uh, um, you're going to have um, people out there, especially our people, who are getting ready to go and spend all this money taking trips and flying over here and doing over here, not worried about how they're not going to be able to even pay rent and eventually be cast out of their houses. All right, but I'm sure, you know, in the process of that, you're going to have the government try to step in with some, you know, with some sort of uh, 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 cushion in a way to try and help the people. But we in the time when even that is not going to really avail. So it says one of the only expectations, it, uh, Salakia, one of the only exceptions to this rule is when the government institutes uh, rent or price controls. There you go. It says in Weimar, Germany, for example, the government enforced strict regulatory controls on landlords, fixing rent at a rate that made profits uh, impossible. And um, I remember when I was watching the uh, the live that was done by the apostles and the uh, the brothers in uh, New York, the after camp, um, the precept in Second Ezra. See if I could get that real quick. Um, Second Ezra is the Ooh, what is it? Let me just word search it. Oh, good. Cheap. All right. Uh, what's this? Let's go into the Apocrypha. Right. So Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 21. And it says here, Behold, uh, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. Now you have something called deflation, right? When when the prices start to go down, but another way to also um, have victuals and goods, you know, being being cheaper for people to be able to buy is price controls. All right, which which uh, Apostle Zahar had mentioned, and price controls is basically when you put the government puts a cap, all right, on how much a business can charge you for a particular product. Like we just read here concerning the um, concerning the rent, you know, and, and certain things, they're gonna put a fixed rate, meaning it's a you you it's a, it's against the law to charge above this amount. This is the amount you have to charge, okay. And that's gonna when prices start getting out of control and governments start to institute that, that is going to then um, look like it's bringing some ease to the people because now they okay I can afford rent because the government has put a a cap on it. Like how they did the uh, moratorium to where people could not be evicted, right? Now, these are all measures that are taken, and this is history repeating itself. They did it in ancient Rome, ancient civilizations, they did that, all right? Prices start getting out of hand, they started printing more money, it wasn't working. They, they, they set up uh, fixed rates and it wasn't working, and that led to more chaos. Why? Because if you, if you tell the, the bodega down the street or the supermarket or the restaurant or the gym or wherever it is that they need to charge you this fixed amount. The problem is they're not, the reason a lot of these stores 
with the exceptions of those that are price uh, gouging, but these stores raise prices to accommodate for how much they're spending. If they go to buy the resources and the products that they're going to now sell to you from the market and they have to pay double for that, they need to increase the price you're paying so that they don't go, they don't lose money. All right. If I buy something worth $10, right, and I'm charging you $5, right, and then I go there and now it's $20 and I'm still going to charge you $5, I'm losing money. So eventually what that's going to do is it's going to it's going to cause a reduction in production because you're going to have a lot of businesses going out of business because they cannot afford to stay open. A lot of merchants are just going to shut their doors and say, look, I got I, I started this business to make money so I can make a living so I can support myself. This business is costing me because I can't charge you the price that I have to in order to stay out here. So a lot of these um you know, businesses are going to start closing because they're going to say, well, what's the point in me staying here so I could lose money? And if I try to go over, they're going to, you know, penalize me. And that's going to cause production to slow down even further. So, you know, applying uh, second as your 16 to like an example scenario like that, when they, if, if you know, when they set price, price controls, it does cut down prices. It does reduce things that you can afford them, but that's only temporary because, that's when uh, 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 people start to think, okay, well, hey, that's not so bad, you know. Hey, th this is good, but not knowing that in the in the mid to long term, that's gonna bring even uh, worse chaos. It's like when they <clears throat> when they printed money and passed it to you in the form of stimulus checks, and in the and in the long run, it ended up causing more inflation. Okay, so the evils are still gonna be growing upon the face of the earth, as it says, what famine, okay, the sword, famine, and great confusion. Because that's going to happen regardless, and doing this is not going to stop it, all right? And it's going to cause the deme uh, the supply to drop even even more. And then eventually, you won't have to worry about just high prices. You're going to have to worry about scarcity. Even if you could afford it, where can you get it? And when it drops to that level, that's when the government comes in and, and, and starts to ration things, which is going to be perfect for them because then they have the control to tell you, well, in order to get this ration, you need, you know, it needs to be tied to your digital ID in order to get your, your universal basic income amount. You need to, you know, they're going to come out and start suggesting these things as solutions. All right. And they're going to they're going to lay out the requirements for you. All right. People going to lose it. So it says here, but obviously this doesn't happen overnight. It's a gra gradual process. So it says, um, let's see, the effects uh, Biden's housing crisis. Now, this might sound familiar. During the height of the of the CVPD, the Biden administration established a lengthy moratorium on evictions, which made it impossible for many property owners to collect payments they uh, they were owed. Owners couldn't replace delinquent tenants with those willing to pay on time, leading to massive financial burden on property owners across America. The effects of this were detrimental to both the U.S. economy and especially the rental market. See, everything comes with a price. How? The moratorium awakened property owners to the reality that they could be unilaterally, re unilaterally restricted from their own business. They could be stopped from collecting rent payments owed by tenants under contract while still being forced to pay taxes and maintain and, and uh, maintenance expenses on those same properties, see, and that's that's basically the example I described. When you set something like that, the those providing you the services, they still need to pay high prices to get you the same services, and yet they can't charge you more. You 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 get the luxury of paying the same price. Eventually, they cannot continue. Uh, um, they can't continue like that. Okay. Because how are they going to get the money to, to pay to keep them, you know, maintain the building and the different expenses? So it says the entire rental market became a zero sum game. In response, landlords began selling their extra properties and in droves instead of renting them out. All right. As you may expect, this has led to a shortage of rentals in many parts of the country. When supply is constrained, what does basic economics tell us must happen? The eviction moratorium led directly to much higher prices on the limited rentals that still remain. Exactly. Because there's only a few left. So now 
scarcity increases, so do prices. But it wasn't just a reduction in that in supply that caused prices to rise. Um, let's see. Those owners still willing to rent properties under eviction moratorium had to increase their prices to compensate them for the additional risks they were taking in a market where the rules suddenly changed. Um, let's see. Now let's look through. There's a lot of information here, but I'm trying to just. All right. So it says here. Um, <clears throat> beautiful. It says in 2022, the median cost of a home in the U.S. is now four hundred and twenty-eight thousand dollars. The average American makes around fifty thousand a year or less, placing them far outside the current market. In terms of rentals, the average cost in the U.S. has exploded to thirteen hundred per month for people that stay anchored to a location, and nineteen hundred per month for people that relocate. This average is, uh, is of course partially pushed up by the ridiculously high prices in major coastal cities like San Francisco, which went up 22% year over year, Los Angeles, which went up 297% since January 2000, and New York, which went up 159%. All right, it says house, house price inflation since January 2000. Now, it says an individual today must make at least twenty dollars an hour to afford a single bedroom apartment consider that over 30 percent of americans are paid less than fifteen dollars an hour before taxes so how are they going to afford with inflation already living paycheck to paycheck how are they going to afford to 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 keep their houses nearly half of the american population doesn't make enough money to maintain a one-bedroom rental wow the vast majority of Americans will find it impossible to buy a home at today's prices. Now, what comes next is home buyers waiting for prices to track uh, lower along with sales may find they're waiting around for a while. Yeah, because prices ain't, ain't, ain't going to come to a suitable condition for you in time. It says this could change if the government enforces price controls on home costs. Granted, that is highly unlikely. <laughs> So, hey, it says the last thing anyone with common sense would want uh, is for the government to become their landlord. By default, it's very hard to defy the trespasses of government overreach when the government controls the roof over your head. And that's why in Second Ezra 16, it says they shall cast them out of their houses. OK, so if it gets to that point where um, the government has to come in control of housing, as the FEMA executive orders state, and they control the food and the electricity and the transportation and the railways and the telecommunications, well, aren't you at their mercy, right? So, I mean, they're definitely, you know, they're definitely uh, uh, putting the squeeze on the people, and people don't actually realize just how much they're affected in every aspect by this uh, uh, perfect storm of inflation, okay, and shortages. But they're about to find out. The scriptures say, in the latter days, he shall consider it perfectly. All right, so people are about to learn, and they're about to learn the hard way. Anyway, with that, I'm going to end it here. Lord willing, you are edified and informed. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Until next time, Shalom.